Pressure is growing on Supreme Court uh, Justice Clarence Thomas over his ethical decisions after a new report in ProPublica. It claims GOP donor Harlan Crow, who paid for vacations and bought Thomas's mother's home, also paid his grandnephew's private school tuition. CBS News Chief Legal Correspondent Jan Crawford is at the Supreme Court with more on reaction from lawmakers. Jan, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I mean, this is really the latest in a series of reports, as you mentioned, about Justice Thomas and his failure uh, to disclose gifts that Senate Democrats say the rules are clear that he should disclose. His defenders have said, well, they're not really that clear, and he didn't need to disclose those. What we've now seen, this latest report, is those tuition payments made by Harlan Crow on behalf of Justice Thomas's grandnephew, who he was helping raise. He took him in when he was like a six-year-old boy. Uh, he was an at-risk youth. And so... Harlan Crow said in a statement that that was something he and his wife did. They supported uh, teens to try to help them, you know, have a better future with education. Uh, but, you know, this is not good enough, obviously, for Senate Democrats who have really focused on Justice Thomas and some of these disclosure issues with laser-like intensity. We saw, of course, this week a Senate Judiciary Committee hearing where all of this was on display. But now uh, we have another report out this morning about Justice Thomas, and this one is something entirely different. It's about uh, something involving payments to Justice Thomas's wife, Jenny. And in this payment, I'm, I, don't, I don't know if we had any graphics on that or not, but, yeah. but, but, yeah, but, but according to this latest uh, report this morning that's in the Washington Post, uh, in 2012, Jenny Thomas was um, actually uh, uh, received payments from something called the Judicial Education Project. Uh, and that payment, that was arranged uh, by Leonard Leo. Leo is one of the most influential conservative activists in Washington. He's behind most of the confirmation and nominations of the current uh, conservative justices on the Supreme Court. And he instructed that the paperwork for those payments have no mention of Jenny Thomas's name. He says that was because he was trying to protect her privacy, uh, but it's raising a lot of questions already this morning. Um, okay, so let's go back because I, I, every morning there's something new now. So let's go I'm back. I'm sorry, that's why I'm trying to keep it. It's, it's yeah. you know, and, and again, on all of this, I, and I could just do a blanket comment, yeah. uh, a remark on all of this, Justice Thomas has, has declined to comment. Right. Okay, so I want to go back to his grandnephew in this tuition right. payment thing, right? Um, so did he need to disclose it or not? Because I've heard some people float, uh, float arguments that because uh, this young man was not his biological son, then somehow he wasn't obligated to disclose the information. And I mean, that's a good point. And certainly his defenders are making that. The rules actually, the law actually says that you um, have to disclose gifts to a son, a daughter, a stepson or a stepdaughter. It doesn't mm. say anything about extended family members, even though Justice Thomas was raising him as a son. So his defenders are saying the rules said he didn't have to require re disclose it. And, and that's why he didn't. Now, even under the more charitable reading of that, and if you agree with that, um, there are Senate Democrats who say, okay, well, even if it wasn't clear, uh, this kind of nitpicking, uh, he should have disclosed it anyway because he was raising him as a son. It was obvious that the disclosure rules were there to encourage reporting of that kind of stuff. And so, you know, well, let's just quit, you know, beating around the bush and nitpicking over this. He still should have disclosed it. That's their point. When you say the rules, I mean, what sort of rules do the Supreme there law, There's is it big? Yeah, their disclosure. I mean, yeah, it's a, I'm, I'm very curious because um, you would think with this a position like this of, of such great importance, uh, the rule book would be like, you know, the Bible. It would be like so thick. Um, you know, what are the guidelines in terms of behavior, what they can and cannot do? Are they, are they, is it just guidance or is it actual no, rules that if you break, yeah, you no, could lose that position? Written yeah, there's actual written statute rules that require judges uh, and all federal employees and different provisions uh, to follow a, a code of ethics, a code mm -hmm. of conduct. And so it requires you on financial disclosure forms to report certain things uh, so that it's transparent. That's the reason behind them is so that, you know, the public can see that they're not being, you know, tainted or corrupted uh, by any, any inappropriate relationships. Um, the problem, though, is, and what Senate Democrats are really pushing for now, is for the court to have have its own code of conduct that's enforceable, a way that the justices uh, can 
be required to file things. And then there's like this enforcement mechanism where people who file complaints against the justices, those can be investigated and that's done in a more transparent way. That's There is a lot of pressure now and that's really behind some of these reports that we've been seeing and certainly at the Senate Judiciary Committee hearing this week. As you can tell, uh, I have many, many questions and not enough time. I could talk to you for a lot longer and I'm sure we'll pick up this conversation at another time. Jan, there's Jan. so much here. Yeah, <laughs> there there's really so is. much here. To, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jan, thank you very much. Thank you.